Hey guys, Sean C. Phillips here with our brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. They're gonna go out today, see what things came out, see what things are on sale. I know today though, one of the only big releases that I think is gonna be in stores is Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. And I believe there's a couple different, you know, retail exclusive editions of that one that come out today. I'm not 100% sure though on what all the ones are, but I'm pretty sure there are some exclusive ones. Also though, at the end of this video, it's gonna be a whole bunch of new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things that I received to review and talk about. Some really cool stuff like Creep Show from Scream Factory, some really cool new Arrow video titles, a new title from uh, Dread Sensor Presents called Extremity, so some really, really cool stuff and a whole bunch of other stuff, so definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video. Also, let me know as well, you know, what you guys thought about the titles that I, you know, reviewed and talked about in this video, like if you guys have seen them and, you know, your thoughts on them. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And this weekend, the only other movie I saw besides Halloween, which I had a standalone review up for that one, was the film The Oath which I feel like hardly anyone's seen that movie, but Ike Barnhart's directed that movie and stars in the film as well as Tiffany Haddish. And like, I really love that movie. It's like one of those movies that's totally under the radar and it's like set in a world where you have to like pledge an oath to agreeing with everything the president says and you have to do everything that he says and you have to sign this document and Ike Barnhart's character doesn't want to sign it and it's all set during Thanksgiving and his whole family comes around and it's kind of like his family all signed it and he didn't and it's him like having these terrible arguments between his family and all these disagreements but then two people from like the presidency that, like work for the president department like come there and then it becomes this huge nightmare about what happens when these two people show up, but I really love that movie. If you guys saw that movie, or um, you know Halloween as well, let me know what you guys thought about it, or let me know what you guys saw this weekend if you guys got to see anything. And in here though, it doesn't look like they changed that any of the stuff. They put like Superfly in the spot where all the um, you know Ant Mans are. So I guess like all the Ant Mans in here sold out. But like I said, the only big release today was um, Mama Mia. Here we go again. At least one of the ones that I feel like they'd have in stores. So I'm probably not going to go to another one. But I think they have like an exclusive of Mamma Mia, but I'm not 100% certain. And they have uh, the Stranger Things on sale again. I feel like these though, these are gonna be here like to the end of time. Cause I remember when these first came out, I thought they were gonna be like really super limited and everything. Now they're down to 12.49, but these keep on like changing. Sometimes they're like $10. I think it like during Black Friday, they were $5. So I'm sure like Black Friday again, they'll probably be on sale. But like I said, it doesn't look like they changed out anything in here yet though, as far as I can tell. Into Walmart we go and I just checked online on Target site and it looks like Mamma Mia the one they have there is an exclusive one that comes with like exclusive bonus features and stuff so I think it's like a you know a, a extra blu-ray or something in that release for that one so there like I said I, I'm pretty sure I thought there was an exclusive one for that one but in here though I don't think they actually have an exclusive of Mamma Mia here we go again the um, the 4k of that one is 2496 and then the standard blu-ray is 1996 so they have a, a couple things in here too I didn't even know they were gonna have but one of the things though that came out today was this movie here called sorry to bother you if you guys have seen this one let me know how this one is if this one's worth picking up but this one came out today which I really like this I'm gonna be talking about this at the end of this video uh, this Peter Dinklage film with him and him and Elle Fanning called I think we're alone now this is like a post-apocalyptic movie and like they're the last people left on the planet this was so so good I really love this one Look, these are falling everywhere I believe though these released today these I am vengeance the blu-ray of that one is 1596 and then I think this is a brand new Scorpion King film here book of souls I'm pretty sure this is brand new but I, I never really watched many of those ones of the Scorpion King series. This is another one that released today, Patient Zero. I'm gonna be talking about this at the end of this video as well. This has Matt Smith and Natalie Dormer and Stanley Tucci. This is actually a really cool zombie movie that I didn't know much at all about it and I really like that. Uh, this one today, uh, The Pagan King, but this is so cool they have this in here. I had no idea they were gonna carry this because I don't think I had ever seen them have a Vestron video release in here in the past as far as I can remember and it's uh, $24.96 and this is the you know, maximum overdrive. This is one of those movies too, once I hear that song, that who made who, you know, it's in your head all day, the ACDC song, but this is just such a cool movie. And then um, A Happening Monumental Proportions, this was today, another one I really liked, as well as Snake Out of Compton, and they have all the new editions today of Twilight. These ones are all the extended editions. And this one down here is some kind of a uh, lifetime movie series here like Very Merry Toy Store and uh, Four Christmases and a Wedding that was today as well but so cool though that they have Maximum Overdrive in here because I had no idea that we were going to have that one 
But in here though, I've still yet to come across any of those VHS slip covers that have come out. And there's some ones that are supposed to be out like at the end, very end of the month, I think like next week, that are gonna be like a happy birthday to me, which looks amazing because it's like a standalone release of it, which I hope I can find, but they still haven't gotten like the first batch of those uh, VHS style slip covers in here. So hopefully at some point a Walmart near me gets them. Cause like I said, I've been to like a tons of different locations over the last like two weeks and have not seen them at, at any of them at all. Into Best Buy we go. But in here though, they have Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. In the front of the store, they had the exclusive Steelbook edition of this one. So that was pretty cool. They had the exclusive Steelbook of that. But also in here, they have uh, Maximum Overdrive. That one is $24.99 as well. So really cool to see this one in Best Buy as well as Walmart. So that's definitely cool to see that in two different spots. Other than that though, I'm not seeing anything else in here too different. But it seems like Walmart had the most of the new releases and they had a lot stuff over there but um the other one that i still yet to find anywhere is that you know the halloween remake steelbook i've seen a lot of people posting that for the last couple weeks but i've yet to ever see that one in any of the best buys near me either like i said though other than that though that seems to be all the different things in here though that i see today but anyway though guys, that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I said, really cool though to see uh, Maximum Overdrive in Best Buy as well as Walmart. Because usually um, you know, they get the Vestron titles in Best Buy, but sometimes they don't get them for the like couple, like till like a couple weeks after it actually released. So they actually have it on, you know, release week for that. So that's really cool. Like I always say too, if you guys enjoyed these videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Now stay tuned now for a whole bunch of new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. Now before we get on to the reviews, I want to show you guys a really cool FY exclusive release here. FYE sent this over to show you guys. This is the Night of the Living Dead, and this is the 50th anniversary collector's edition, the Ultimate Fan box set. And a really cool hardbound case here. You guys can get this thing, um, you know, this release in FYE stores as well as on FYE's website. And I'll show you guys a little look at what's inside of this release here. Uh, and it has images on the back as well. The first thing in here is Night of the Living Dead, the graphic novel. So it's the Night of the Living Dead film all turned into a graphic novel. So it has all the scenes you know, drawn out and it has like the text and everything, but really great, you know, drawings and stuff here for all the scenes. So a really cool thing to have included in here. You also get a comm commemorative ticket here because they're playing Night of the Living Dead in theaters, like a Fathom event thing. You can see like the 4K transfer release of it, the newest, you know, transfer release of the film in theaters. It has like a commemorative ticket that you guys would get if you were seeing that in theaters. This is what you see too on the back. I just took this off. But also inside of here, you get uh, lobby cards. So these really cool um, lobby cards from the film. I'll show you guys some of these ones. They have really cool like gold kind of text around the top of them. And then you select like, the scenes here for them. These are also included. There was one or two of them that I couldn't show. Also in here, you get um, the uh, brand new, you know, uh, came out like a couple months back, the Night of the Living Dead, the Criterion uh, release Blu-ray as well as included in here. So this is a very, very cool set here. This is a you know really great release as well. So if you guys don't have that too, this is definitely a very cool upgrade set, especially to get the graphic novel and the lobby cards and everything in here. But like I said, just wanted to give you guys a little look at what's inside of this set. And like I said, this is an FYE exclusive one. So you guys can, like I said, can get this on their website or in stores. Now onto the reviews. Now the first one here is from Arrow Video. It's a movie here called uh, Torso, and I just finished watching this one. And this is a Sergio Martini film, Martino film. And this is basically though this movie too. I feel like this definitely like inspired some slasher films that came after this one because this was from uh, 1973. This also has on here a couple of different cuts of the film, like with different um, credits, because like the movie in the U.S. was released under some other titles, like Torso, and then another title it is like an Italian cut with the Italian language as well as like a cut that's like a mixture between like both of the versions of the, the Italian and the English language version. But it's basically though about this serial killer that's going around and killing people who are at this college. And the killer... It's like there's some crazy scenes because like the people that he kills, um, he goes and like gouges out their eyes and it's like intense because he's remembering too back to when he was a kid, this th thing with this doll, when he pushed the, doll, the eyes of this doll out. But it's essentially though about like these police, you know, the police detective and everything trying to track down who the killer is, sort of like a whodunit type film because like the character's wearing this mask and stuff. So you kind of, they always kind of like hint to like, oh, it could be this person because they have a scratch and it could be, you know, like throughout the movie they're kind of hinting to who the killer is. 
is. But really, really cool film here. This has on here the brand new 2K restoration of the film here. Really great transfer on here. As well as it on here, it has a new commentary track on here. Has a new video interview with the co-writer on here. New interview with, uh, with the filmmaker who's the daughter of Sergio Martino. As well as um, an international horror festival Q&A on here. Uh, so lots and lots of you know features on this release here. As well as a booklet in here that has pictures and stuff like that from um you know, from the film and some facts and stuff about it, but really, really cool slasher film here. Like I said, definitely, I feel like this movie definitely inspired some films, you know, with the, the, the killer and kind of the way the scenes were. It was definitely ahead of its time with the stuff that was going on in this one. The next one here is the Jim Van Bieber. I, I, think, I believe that's how you saw, say his name. Uh, film. There's a documentary too on um, him called Dire of the Deadbeat, which came out a couple years back. It's a really good documentary. But this is the film that he directed. I believe this was his first film. And this is uh, Deadbeat at Dawn. And I love the cover on this one, like the way this looks and everything, and the slip cover on this release. This is essentially, though, uh, it's basically, though, about this guy who is in a gang, and he's kind of like the head of the gang. And it, and it's like kind of problems between him and this other gang, and there's like rivalries and everything that is going on between them and everything. And his girlfriend, because he was recently like injured really bad, and the girlfriend is like, I don't want you doing this anymore. I want want you to like get out of this. And it's essentially about him trying to get out of this gang, but then like kind of dealing with the repercussions of doing so. But this was really really well done. Like I said, I saw I never actually saw this before. I saw the documentary and the director, which is a really good documentary. So it was really cool to see this one. This has on here a uh, brand new 2k restoration of the film here which is you know supervised by the director really great transfer on this one has on here a bunch of different features on this one it has a brand new uh, commentary track on here with the director it has on here a feature length uh, retrospective documentary on this one um, and it actually has on here uh, deadbeat forever a brand new feature length so it has a new documentary on here so that's pretty cool that uh, Victor Bonacore who I worked with years back on one of his sh uh, short films he he uh, has a documentary on this one. It has outtakes on here, uh, newly transferred in HD, uh, some uh, Jim Van Bieber uh, short films on here, some of his early short films. So lots and lots of uh, features on this release. I'll show you a little look inside. It has a you know booklet as well with some pictures and some stuff like that, you know, facts about the movie and all that kind of stuff. But a really, really cool movie. Really cool to see this one. Uh, the next one here, just want you guys know that this one is available from Arrow Video, and this is from the Arrow Academy line. It's a movie here called uh, Distant Voices Still Still Lives. And, it's, and it has on here, though, a brand new 4K restoration of the film on this one. It has a commentary track on here with the writer and director, Terrence Davis. It has an interview on here with Terrence Davis, interview with art director on this one as well as some um, uh, images of Liverpool, three uh, films from the BFI National Archives, some films from the 1939, 41, and 42. And I'll show you guys as well inside of here. It has a uh, booklet in here with some pictures and things like that as well from the movie and all that kind of stuff. Always cool that Hour includes these ones you know, the booklet and everything in all their releases. The next one's here. This one here is from uh, Shout Factory, Scream Factory line. This is a really cool release of the George Romero's film Creep Show. And I love this one. It's in this cool hardbound uh, case here. This, in my opinion, I have to say is probably my all-time favorite anthology film. I feel like when, you, when I think of like anthology horror films, this is like, to me, the top one. I love the sequel as well. I especially love the Raft segment in the sequel, but this one, every segment in this I like. Especially love the segment that Stephen King acts in when he like touches this meteor and like this stuff like grows on his hand. And it starts like growing all over him. And it, it, every segment of this is so cool though. The crate segment, which is like a creature that's in this crate. And like it's like sneaking out and killing people. Um, the one on the birthday one. The one with Ted Danson, Leslie Nielsen. I love. And it's like when, you know, when Ted Danson's character ends up like dug in a hole in the ground. With the, you know, by the, in the ocean. You know, right why the tide is coming in, it's going to bury him. I, it, this is an amazing, amazing anthology film. And it's, you know, this, the stories were by, um, you know, S you know Stephen King wrote the screenplay on this one. George Romero directed this. But this has on here tons of new features. It has a brand new 4K scan of the film. It has on here a commentary track on here. Um, it has a um, roundtable discussing with members of the cast and crew, talking about the movie. It has a comic book look, an interview with the costume designer on this one. 
the colors of creep show look at and which is talking about uh the you know the restoration of the film like the new restoration everything on this one has audio interviews on this one tom savini's behind the scenes footage and also inside of here it has a booklet with and it's really cool it has a booklet in here which has you know concept art behind the scenes kind of stuff really really cool book i don't know this is this is a great release an absolutely amazing anthology film and also here a look at the blu-ray itself and that has a different it has like the original uh poster artwork but i love the new artwork on this hardbound case as well look inside and actually has reversible artwork as well but this is just a really really great release and it's like if you guys are fan of anthology films this is absolutely a must must watch if you guys have never seen this one this is like like i said this is definitely in my opinion the top anthology horror film it's an absolute just must watch and the next one here is from Shout Factory as well, and this is from the Shout Select line. It's a movie here starring T uh, Dan Aykroyd and Tom Hanks called Dragnet. And this is a takeoff on the, you know, there was a number of different renditions of the Dragnet TV series. This is kind of like a parody of that. I only saw like a couple of clips of the show. I never saw a full episode or anything, but it's essentially too a, a kind of a spoof on cop shows and all that kind of stuff. And it's Dan Aykroyd's character, and both of them, though, are um, detectives. And, um... It's essentially, though, Dan Aykroyd's character, he is, like, real a super serious kind of detective. He's all by the book, and he has to do everything, like, exactly how it is. And Tom Hanks is his new partner, and Tom Hanks is kind of, like, you know, he's not as worrisome about how he's doing things. He doesn't, like, follow all the rules and everything. And they're having to work together because they're on their first case together, which is um, there's all kind of criminal activity going on. Like, things are getting stolen. Things are, you know, and, they're all, and, and like, things are happening to people, and these things are getting messed up and everything. And they're leaving all these calling calls. Call Calling cards everywhere that say pagan these like cards that are everywhere and they're in charge though of trying to figure out exactly who are these people and who is behind the whole thing and like um you see in the beginning too like this one guy is like torching this one place of all these magazines and everything so that's like the first place they go is where all these magazines were destroyed like the owner of the place who's kind of like a hugh hefner kind of guy played by dabney colin and it's kind of like he was he had this really funny accent that he was doing in this movie but essentially though it's like them both trying to work together on their first first case with all sorts of problems and everything and the thing that's kind of cool though is one character that Dan Aykroyd's character he likes in this movie this this girl um, the house that she lives in is the exact house that like the year later that the Burbs was actually Tom Hanks's character was you know lived in so it's kind of cool it was exact exact same house as from the Burbs house so that was just a cool little thing that was like because they, they shot this I think this movie is like right before the, for the Burbs, I'm pretty sure. But this is actually the release for the first time ever on Blu-ray. Just a really, really fun movie. I, like I said, I never saw this one before. This has on here, though, an interview on here with um, co-star on this one, Alexander Paul. It has a commentary track on here with pop culture historian Russell Dybal, as well as um, a promotional look at Dragnet with Dan Aykroyd, Tom Hanks, theatrical trailers and promos, as well as a photo gallery in this one. The next one here is from Shout's uh, Select Line as well, and it's a movie here called Get Shorty. And this has uh, John Travolta, Gene Hackman, Rene Russo, and Danny DeVito. And I saw this one years and years back, and they even, they made a sequel to this one as well, which dealt with the movie and uh, the music industry, which was called Be Cool. And this is essentially, though, about John Travolta's character, who kind of, like, works sort of for the mob. It's kind of like, I guess he's kind of the guy who's, like, collects money. Like, if people owe money to certain people, he kind of goes and kind of tries to, like, rough them up a little bit or kind of, like, intimidate them so he gets paid and everything. But he ends up having to... Um, He's having new pro like problems with a guy now who's, who's in charge of the group. He's like working for the mob because this new guy comes in and he doesn't like this guy. So he kind of wants to get out of this whole thing. But he has to go to Vegas because somebody like took like he like faked his own death and he has to go there and find this guy and figure out where he is because he has all this money that he got because of faking his own death and uh, essentially he's trying to track him down so then he kind of follows him to LA because he finds out that he might have something to do with this film producer play, played by Gene Hackman and but when he when John Travolta's character gets there he finds out that Gene Hackman's character is like doing all these movies and he's working on this new big film that he's doing and he's like it's going to be like his biggest movie and John Travolta's character 
character is kind of like, oh, he kind of like starts to like, like this idea of the film industry and thinks that this is kind of going to be like what he can do now. He can kind of be out of the, the mob scene and all that kind of stuff. And he wants to be a producer. So it's kind of like about them working together and um, him like not knowing exactly what he's doing and trying to get this movie made. And this is directed by, you know, Barry Sonnefeld, who, you know, who directed the Adams Family films. I always really like his stuff like Men in Black. This is just a really, really fun movie. Always love Gene Hackman and Dane DeVito's great in this movie. This is another really fun movie. It has on here, though, a brand new 4K transfer of the movie, which looks, you know, really great transfer on this one. Comedy track on here with the director. Some featurettes on this one. Uh, page to screen of Get Shorty. Uh, the graveyard scene and featurette. Uh, vignettes on this one. Trailer. So lots and lots of features on this one. The next one here is from Lionsgate. This is the 4K Ultra HD release here of The Spy Who Dumped Me. And this stars, you know, Mila Kunis and Kate McKinnon. And, like, Kate McKinnon is great. Like, you know, she's, like, I think she's probably my favorite person on SNL, um, you know, especially, you know, at least currently. She's always, like, her character work is amazing. And, like, she did a really good job in this movie. Same with Mila Kunis. I thought they both worked really well together. This one of those movies, I really hope they get to do another one of this. But it's essentially, though, about Mila Kunis's character who, you know, ends up breaking up with, you know, her, well, her boyfriend. She's kind of getting an argument with her boyfriend, and he ends up, you know, she finds out something happened to him and he got killed, but like he was involved with something. So like she ends up having to go to this other country because of this to try and like deliver something because people kind of coming after her and her friend, you know, played by Kate McKinnon. And so it's essentially like she falls into the spy life with her, you know, with Kate McKinnon and like they end up, um, with like getting there and people are kind of coming after them and, and trying to get the thing but then they but then they kind of run into all these sort of situations like if they give this certain thing are they going to get killed and then other people are kind of coming after them and it becomes this whole thing about them like basically falling into a spy situation with all sorts of problems going on and like every kind of situation they have no idea what they're doing all these people are coming after them I just thought this was like a really really fun movie it's kind of like a parody a little bit of like a James Bond type film like because it's like super over the top some of the stuff that's happening but I really loved it I like I said really big fan of both of Mila Kunis and Kate McKinnon I thought they did an amazing job in this movie I, I just I honestly thought this was a very fun movie has on here though a making of Spy Who Dumped Me it has on here outtakes on this one uh, deleted scenes 4K wise though, if you guys have 4K capacities, I always say like the big thing with 4K, the big thing that you're really noticing is the the HDR and the, which is basically means the high dynamic range, which is like the contrast levels, which means the picture has much more like darkness levels to this one and much more details with everything. Also, I always notice too the picture has a much brighter, vibrant quality to it, so definitely benefits this one. But if you guys like kind of spy type films, uh, you know, but like kind of like with sort of more of a parody kind of over the top kind of s to them definitely watch this one like i said i really love this the next one here this is another one that i give a top recommendation to i didn't know much one going into this one at all and also uh kyle mooney who's from snl another character a person on snl who i love and he was really good in this movie it's a movie here called never going back this is from lionsgate as well and it's also an a24 title and this is basically about these two friends and like it's kind of like um they're they're like all they one of the friend is getting ready to turn 17 and for her birthday her friend is going to like take her to the beach and like uh, it's like the one big thing they want to do is go to the beach and kind of get away and everything but they don't really know how they're going to pay for it so they have to like work at their diner job you know all week long to have enough money to actually pay for the place that they're going to stay at but they end up running into all sorts of problems like um the one roommate at the house, like the, um, he was like selling drugs and then someone came in there and stole their TV. And then the, because of that, there was like an argument and both the girls ended up getting arrested. And then like, they, it's like, basically it's kind of like everything is going on. It is derailing their ability to try and go to the beach and, and, you know, earning their money and everything. And there's some great stuff in here with them when they're going to the, when they're at this market and they get in this argument with this one guy. And it, but it's like, it's just, this is a, <laughs> You know, it's like this amazing argument that they have with this this older couple there and stuff. I, I love this movie. I thought both the girls did a really good job in this movie. The one actress in here, she was recently in um, playing Bruce Willis's daughter in the Death Wish remake film. 
she did a really good job in that one as well. But this, I, did, I don't know, I love this one. I really, really got into this movie, and I thought it was really well done. And Kyle Mooney plays the kind of um, one of their roommates who's like kind of works at this sub shop. I don't know, I just really love this. Everyone did a really good job in this movie. It has it in here a commentary track on here with the producers as well as the actors on this one. A deleted scene and a blooper reel. But highly recommend you you guys check this movie out. If you guys like movies kind of about everything that can go wrong, going wrong, and just trying to get to the ultimate goal of one big thing they want to do, and everything kind of getting in the way to derail that, definitely watch this one. The next one here is from Epic Pictures, and this is from their Dread Central line. It's a movie here called Extremity. And this one, too, you guys can order this one exclusively from the uh, Epic Pictures website. I'll have a link below for where to order this one. And this is from director Anthony ba Babassi. I, I always say his name wrong, but he directed... Um, I think it was called like The Last Shift. I don't know if it says on the back here, but one movie I really loved. And um, this one is called Extremity. This is essentially, though, about an extreme haunt attraction. It's about this girl who, um, you know, finds out about this, you know, extreme haunt and she wants to go to it. And she, um, she's kind of, her doctors are saying, you know, you shouldn't go to this one because she has kind of emotional problems and she's had a lot of problems in the past. So she's kind of told that she shouldn't do this, but she really, really wants to go. And she has to sign like a waiver and like she's talking on the phone to people who are involved in it. Essentially, though, about her getting like, going to this kind of abandoned building, getting taken into this, you know, haunt kind of blindfolded and everything and it's her and this other guy and it's her kind of going through this haunt and you know something big it's going to build up to something and there's also like a crew from japan kind of doing a documentary on this whole thing and like talking to the people involved in it and filming the whole thing there's also um this one scene where they're watching tv and there's like a there's because like, there's some fun cameos in here like uh, uh, tiffany shepis is in here in like a scene where they're showing like on tv some like haunted scare actor kind of stuff but on one scene though they're watching tv as a movie with Felissa rose and uh, Michael St. Michaels, uh, you know, who played the Greasy Strangler in the Greasy Strangler film. And it's like this real quick scene, but it's like, man, I would love to see a whole movie of that scene, too. Because I was like, of, of that. I hope they do that. Because honestly, that would be a great movie. Especially if Michael St. Michaels is like a serial killer. I don't know. But this is just a crazy movie. And it builds up. And there's some extreme, extreme gore in this movie. Like, totally in, in, intense. This has on here, though, an interview with the director behind the scenes, deleted scenes on this one, uh, outtakes on this one, as well as Fatal Bleeding, a uh, short film on this one. Uh, the next one here is from uh, Sony. And this is a movie here called uh, Patient Zero, and this stars uh, Matt Smith, uh, Natalie Dormer, and uh, Stanley Tucci. And, it, and I, it's another one. I didn't know much about this movie, and this I really got into this film. And it's basically though about uh, a zombie kind of. It's not really a zombie outbreak. It's like sort of dealing with. Um, uh, it's sort of, sort of what, what are they calling this one in here? Everybody is kind of like almost like. Um, rabies kind of thing where everyone's kind of full of like gets people that get infected like full of rage and are, like totally like un uncontrollable and attacking and like ki killing people and they are essentially zombies but more like rage kind of I guess like 28 days later kind of kind of infected more or less but it's essentially though about Matt Smith's character and it's all set underground in this bunker kind of building and what I love because I'm like Day of the Dead is my favorite zombie film of all time I think that to me that's like my favorite one and um and this has that kind of vibe to this one like honestly this one was much cooler than the day of the dead remake like this one i almost wish this could be considered that in a, in a weird way Cause, you know what i mean but it's essentially though about you know um the the scientists and everything trying to find patient zero they're trying to track down the originator of this virus and of you know this rage virus so they're kind of trying to see if they can find them and um, matt smith's character has the ability though to talk to these these raids you know people these raid zombies he's the only one that can do it because he was bitten by a zombie but for some reason you know and infected and it didn't turn him and it's essentially though about him talking to them trying to talk to the zombies or infected and trying to see if he can track down where these people are you know where the um patient zero is and kind of figuring out where people were bit and all that kind of stuff i don't know i i like this one and natalie Dermer, you know who was in um the hunger games films and um 
I think she was in uh, Game of Thrones and the movie The Forest, a bunch of stuff. She was really good in this one, especially Stanley, Stanley Tucci. I love seeing him in this. I think this, I feel like this is like the first horror movie I've ever seen him in. But definitely check this out, guys. I really, really, really got into this one. And the next one here is from Sony as well. It's a movie here called The Padre, and this stars uh, Tim Roth, Luis Guzman, uh, Nick Nolte. This is about Nick Nolte, and his character is goes to Colombia, and he's like kind of on the tail of trying to track down Tim Roth's character, who's like a con man, who's like currently like posing as a priest east in you know Colombia and it's kind of like he's always planning like these schemes and these things that he's doing and you kind of find out exactly why Nick Nolte is tracking him down and what exactly happened in the past and everything and Luis Guzman's character is working with him and he's a cop working with Nick Nolte trying to track him down like in the very beginning they figure out where he is they find him exactly where he is but like kind of like throughout the movie they're on his trail and like losing him and trying to find him but um, Tim Ross character is planning like a really big thing and he meets this one girl there who's trying to like get him to help her you know her because she's trying to get over to America and she kind of like gets in his car and hides in the back and he doesn't know and it's kind of like them working together on one big thing and so it's like becomes like a whole big thing going on with those two planning something as well as Luis Guzman and you know and um Nick Nolte's character tracking them down, trying to find them, like, and kind of, like I said, getting lost along the way and everything. I thought this was actually a pretty interesting movie. I always really, really love Nick Nolte and Nick Nolte, especially Louise Guzman as well. But Nick Nolte did a really, really good job in this one. The next one here is from uh, Universal, and this is the sequel to Mamma Mia, and this is Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. This has on here the sing along edition of the film as well, so it has, like, the musical stuff throughout the film. You know, and this is, you know, has the music from ABBA, you know. And I, I remember the first film, too. They're really fun you know musical films and this one though shows a lot more about um you know about uh, Meryl Streep's character and kind of because you know the first one was kind of like the mystery of who was Amanda Seyfried's um, father because it was like these different guys and like not, kind of like throughout it you were figuring out trying to figure out who the father was and everything and this one shows her character when you know Meryl Streep's character when she was younger and kind of like her encountering the guys and everything and in her past and it's also dealing with currently about Amanda Seyfried's character who is pregnant and she's kind of having her own kind of problems in her life and stuff too and it's kind of all in the same place that the, the, the first film was set and it's essentially though all kind of like how the past is kind of paralyzed you know para, paralleling with the present and everything so it's kind of interesting the way it's put together and everything really really great music in this one Lily, Lily James though plays the young um, Meryl Streep in the stuff in the past but on here though it has a whole bunch of different features it has Mamma Mia Reunited it has on here a curtain call the story a Today Show interview here with Cher and Judy Kramer so and deleted and extended scenes on here as well as uh, uh, enhanced sing-along versions as well for k wise though looks great on 4k so if you guys have 4k would definitely recommend this one but just a really really fun musical film here the next one here is from uh e1's uh, momentum pictures line and this is a movie here starring peter dinklage and l fanning called i think we're alone now and um this is another one i top recommendation a huge fan to of peter dinklage and l fanning both of them were amazing in this movie and this is a, a post-apocalyptic film where something has happened and like everyone is dead and it starts off with Peter Dinklage's character, and he kind of is going around, and it's all set in this kind of small kind of town, and he's going around, kind of putting X's out front and going house by house and cleaning up the houses, removing the bodies of people who had died there. And it was like a, you find out too about how people died. And it was really interesting about how it like it. Ha I don't want to say too much and ruin anything, but. Essentially, though, he's kind of all alone, going around, cleaning up the houses, trying to clean up the town. He's, like, fixing everything up, trying to make everything look as if kind of like everything's okay, but yet there's nobody here. But then the one day he ends up finding, uh, meeting Elle Fanning's character, he just randomly sees her. And it's kind of like she, you know, is can't believe that she's found somebody else who's alive. And she wants to help him out, and be, they kind of become friends. But at first he doesn't want to, want to be around her because he's so used to being by himself. And they're kind of working together, you know, um, moving the bodies and everything. And it's kind of a relationship between both of them that's going on. But there's some really interesting, you know, stuff that happens throughout this movie. I don't want to say anything else, but this was, I don't know, this is like probably one of the most interesting, different post-apocalyptic movies I've, I've seen. And extremely well shot and everything, really, really well acted. If you guys have seen this one, let me know what you guys thought. 
The next ones here, I'll put a link for where you guys can order these ones for the best price. But these are from Sony. And these ones are really cool. These ones have got, you know, uh, releases. The first one here is Night of the Living Dead. And this is, you know, the uh, Tom Savini remake. And I actually think this is probably one of the, in, you know, the top like five or ten, you know, at least maybe even five, you know, uh, remake films that I, you know, horror remakes. This one, I don't know, I really like this. I thought Tom Savini did an amazing job directing this one. You know, Tony Todd is in this movie. It's essentially, though, it's pretty much the same story as the first, Night of, the original Night of the Living Dead. And, um,. If you guys don't know it, it's basically like the zombie, you know, all kind of randomly showed up. And it's a woman who was out with her brother kind of going to see the grave of their mother. And, um, you know, Bill Mosley's in the very beginning playing the brother. But essentially, though, she ends up seeing, you know, zombies coming out of the, you know, and walking around the graveyard. She runs and finds this house where it's this guy in there and some people down in the basement. And they're kind of trying to board up the house and everything to fight off the zombies. But this has on here, though, the making of featurette, uh, Tom Savini's uh, commentary on this one. But really cool this one has a release because this came out you know in a really super limited edition release in the past so this one now has a main release as well but really cool and just you know if you guys have never watched this one definitely a must watch also here this is so cool too this is uh evil dead the you know evil dead remake but finally has a U.S. release of the um, unrated version of the film. And this is, you know, like I said, the remake of the movie. And I actually really like this remake. I really wish they actually made a sequel to this one. I really liked... Um you know, Jane Levy in this one playing, you know, the she because instead of like the Ash role, she was playing Ash's kind of character, like essentially what he was doing, she's doing in this one, sort of, sort of in this one. It's, it's different, though, the way it's kind of changed all around and everything, but she's the, the star of this. And it's essentially, though, about them going to the cabin, reading from the Book of the Dead, and it's like what ends up happening to everybody in there, and it's like insane possessions and everything going on, super insanely gory movie. I love this movie so much. Like I said, I think this is another one of the really, really really well done remakes. This has on her a commentary track, uh, making of featurettes on this one, uh, thing on here talking about the reboot. But like I said, the cool thing is this includes the original Blu-ray release from years back as well as a brand new Blu-ray release which has the unrated cut. And the unrated cut is, I think, like six minutes different and it has some extended stuff, some extended gore and everything in this one. But really cool, this one finally has a U.S. release. Also, for those wondering, these are um, pressed releases. So they're just like a, you know, they're not like a DVR release because I know some people were asking me that when I talked about these to let me know, them know. That's the same goes for the Night of Living Dead one. These are um, pressed discs, so they're not DVDRs for those who are curious about that. The next one here, this one is going to, is an, I only have the actual disc because this one doesn't have a DVD release yet hopefully they release it on DVD down the line but as of now it's exclusively on iTunes and I just finished watching this as well it's a documentary here called Family of Fear I'm sorry I only have the um a disc for this one. Like I said, there's no, they burnt a disc of it to, so I could talk about it. But I got, I really thought this was an amazing documentary about this um, haunted house. And it's basically though, it kind of shows through the whole process of, of this haunted house about like the very beginning when they're casting the actors to it. And then it has interviews too with the actors kind of talking about how this place helps them out so much because they're dealing with depression and, you know, bullying and school and kind of like all the kind of problems that they've had in their life and how coming together every month you know you know October for one month you know, they actually train a little couple months before but this whole thing of working here you know and they all volunteer as well helps them out so much and it kind of goes through like I said the training process through opening day through like the, the final night of the of the haunted attraction this is one of those documentaries though where you know they don't always have this feeling but you really feel like you were you went, went through this this whole experience with them and it was kind of like emotional like I thought this was really well done and I love the way they put this together and I loved you know just like in hearing from everybody kind of what this place meant to them but it's one of those ones too I definitely want to look up more videos of the haunted house as well you know the actual place because it's been around for years but a really well put together haunted house as well but definitely it's like check this documentary out like I said it's called Family of Fear you guys can you know rent this one off of iTunes now the next one here is from Full Moon and this is like, I, I cannot tell you how excited I was when I heard this was coming out. They're going to be releasing um, Pet Shop uh, soon. Hopefully, they release um, Remote. I hope, you know, hopefully these uh, do well and they do remote and they do the sequels to this film. I, I love, like, I grew up watching this uh, line of films. This was the um, Moonbeam films that Full Moon did, which were the films for kids. 
And these were, you know, came out when I was a little kid. So I was like, I think it was six or seven, something like that. So I was like really watching these. And they also aired these on the Disney Channel some. But this one here is Prehysteria. And this is great. This The star of this is the kid who, Austin O'Brien, you know, who was in uh, Last Action Hero. This is essentially about this man who is this guy who went over kind of looking for like um, treasures and stuff to sell in his store. as like an antique kind of store. And he ends up coming across these dinosaur little tiny eggs. And he doesn't know what they are at first. First, but there turns out to be these dinosaur eggs and he takes them back to America in this cooler but then Austin O'Brien's father and his sister are trying to sell these like fossils they found in this, the antique store and they have a cooler as well with like food and everything they end up mixing up the two coolers and they end up ending up you know with the cooler that had the dinosaur eggs in them taken back to their house and they hatch and it's like these tiny little miniature dinosaurs and it's like um you know, if you guys know, you know, Full Moon's releases and their films that they've done with the Puppet Master films and the Ghoulies and that kind of stuff with the Empire Pictures and everything, they're, they do really good work with puppetry and little puppets and, and animatronics and that kind of stuff. So they did an amazing job on this. Like I said, um, another one too they did was like Jack and the Beanstalk one they did. I think it was called Beanstalk. It was another one of the Moonbeam moon beam titles. But picture quality is amazing on this one. Has a commentary track on here with uh, Austin O'Brien and Charles Band. As well well as the original video zone they used to put you know like making of and everything but like I said uh, definitely is like I feel like you know I feel like if you're around my age or so you probably knew about those line this one here is one you guys know this is available and this is Poet Masters Blitzkrieg Massacre this is like um, Bunker of Blood Chapter 1 this is kind of like a um an anthology kind of thing here where it's um it starts off with like a new animation about this man who this guy who comes into this kind of cavern where he has these VHS tapes and he's watching him and it's essentially like horror scenes and stuff like that like some of the gory scenes and things like that from the puppet master films it's like a complication of all those ones together and the next one here is from Full Moon as well. This is a VHS release. This is done in an old school uh, big box release in the, for the visit, uh, Wizard Video line. But in here, though, I love the way that this opens up. It has this... I don't, I don't know if I ever owned any of these kind of tapes, you know, when these were like this. I... I don't, I don't know, but it's. I love the way it opens up like this. But it's a retro style big box release of the film Parasite, and they have a version of this you can order from the site that's like signed by, um, I believe Charles Band signs the uh, copy of this one. I'm pretty sure. I have, I have you know, that's on is exclusively on their website. The next one's here. These are Italian releases from Midnight Factory, and this one, um, this one is a Region B locked release, and this is here of the Return of the Living Dead. This limited uh, edition release here, another one in a cool hardbound case here this is another like probably like um i said like you know day of the dead is probably my favorite zombie movie then dawn of the dead and probably then return of the dead but they're all kind of tied i love these ones so much but these has on here tons of different features it has like the documentary on here a 2k uh, master on here the work print of the film and i'll show you guys a little look inside at this it has a booklet really cool booklet which has you know pictures from the movie i'll see which ones i can show you know some like some of the um, zombie photos and everything in this one. It's a three disc set here. And I love this one. I can smell your brains. I don't. I, I love this movie. I've watched this movie so many times. But I love this release. I love you know all kinds of releases of this film. I have so many different ones. So really cool. They sent this one over. So if you guys are a fan of this movie, this is a cool Italian release of this. And then this is another release from Midnight Factory. This one is Region B locked as well. This is a movie here called Excision. I'm always saying this one wrong. But this stars uh, Anna, Anna Lynn McCord. It's probably my favorite movie of hers that she's been in. Tracy Lorge is in this movie, Ariel Winter, um, John Waters in this movie, Malcolm McDowell. And it's basically about this, this girl who has this obsession with death, and she's had all these fantasies with death and corpses and all kinds of weird things. And like she's seeing this priest played by, you know, John Waters, and it's like weird stuff going on with him. And her sister is sick, so it's like all the kind of thought is on the sister, but so she's kind of cracking up and everything. But this is a great, really out there movie but the cover on this release here i love this cover on this this is a really really trippy trippy movie this one has a booklet as well with some stuff about the movie like i said this is all in italian though uh the next one here too and this one i have to mention though this one is a region free release but this one you know only has the um italian subtitles on this 
uh, you know, so just keep that in mind. But this is um, German Angst here, and this is an anthology film. You know, the, the director of this one did, um, you know, there's three different directors, but the main director that I know of on this one who directed, you know, the Necromantic films and the Death King has a segment on here. Which I think his segment was probably my favorite. I can't show too much in here. I have to see what I can show in this booklet. But it's like, um, see, I can show this one here. But like this one has like a booklet and stuff like that with pictures in this one. But like I said, keep in mind though, with this particular release, this one does not have, uh, you know, English subtitles on this one. It does have an Italian version as well as the English dialogue track. These ones here are from Time Life. And these are cool if you guys don't have these ones too. And also, amazing set. And this is, um, there's also a, a big set as well, like a super deluxe edition of this that's released. But this is the best of the Three Stooges. If you guys know me, like Three Stooges, like I grew up watching these. I rented, like, some of my first VHS tapes I remember having were the Three Stooges, like, um, sets. I think the one that I watched, the main one, was when Curly, like, they rob this safe and they bite on this um, <laughs> ham bone and, you know, Curly breaks his tooth. And he's like, oh, my poor tooth. That was like my favorite one of all time. Like, I love that segment so much. Anytime I see that kind of ham, that weird sort of thick ham, I think of that. But in here, though, this this set has all of the Three Stooges episodes. or They weren't actually episodes. They were shorts that played in theaters. But all of the shorts up until uh, 1945 here. So it has all the ones that Curly were in, like from the very beginning. It also has some um, on here. On this is let's see, with Volume Three, it has some of the Shemp Howard classics as well from the 30s and 40s. Some Joe Bresser comedy shorts, but the deluxe edition though has all of them, like the entire set. So there's a deluxe one as well, but also has on here some of the Sh Three Stooges films. It has the Three Stooges biopic, which Michael Chiklis was playing Curly in that. I love that biopic. I remember taping that off TV and watching that all the time. This has on here um, some of the Three Stooges cartoons. It has How Rocket Will Travel. Um, it has the Outlaws is Coming, Rockin' in the Rockies. It also has the documentary series on here, Hey Mo, Hey Dad. It has all the episodes of that, which was um, Mo's son kind of talking about his father in a documentary and the whole thing. But it was a really, really well done documentary, but really cool set here. Uh, the next one here is from uh, VCI, and this is Mario Bava's film, uh, Blood and Black Lace. This release has a brand new 2K, I mean, brand, yeah, brand new 2018 2K restoration on this one. Commentary track on here with the um, editor in chief of D Diabolic magazine. Commentary on track on here with um, writer and director Courtney J. Jarner. Uh, video interviews on this one. Theatrical trailer. Alternate U.S. Ma main titles on this one. Uh, com video comparisons to the American and European cuts of the film. This is essentially about all these models that were together for this kind of like fashion show kind of event. And someone is dressed in this kind of like. Um, mass type thing and the models are getting killed off one by one and it's kind of like a it's a giallo film about you know who is killing them really really well done like i said it's a mario bava film here and here it has a it has the dvd of the film as well as the blu-ray next one is from uh bbc and this is a series here called killing eve and this is basically though about two different characters um and it's um the um you know, Sandra O's character, who is like works kind of like for, I guess you would say it's sort of like a, um, like a government kind of facility kind of job. And she's kind of trying to track down this woman who is this, like killing these people. And, um, but at the same time, like she's, she's kind of like a hired hit, hit woman. But she's like Sandra O's character kind of like really almost kind of envies this woman and envies what she's doing and she's out there doing things and, and her character is sort of stuck behind the desk so it's kind of her trying to track her down but at the same time like i said kind of envying her but it's a really well done series it has on here though a bunch of different featurettes on here uh, the art of the kill creating the show uh things on here about the locations on this one this one here is from pbs and this is a series which stars uh, Mar marcus samuelson as the, as the host and going around and, and marcus samuelson is a I've always known him from Food Network. He's in a bunch of different shows. This is called um, No Passport Required. This is basically all about him going and interviewing and talking to immigrants who came to America 
about like the food culture and kind of things that they brought over from their country. And he goes to, you know, a bunch of different states like Detroit. I'm trying to think of all the ones he goes to. I don't know if it says right on here, but he goes to a, a you know, New York, uh, Chicago, and it's kind of him interviewing the people kind of, t and then he goes and like tries some of the food and he goes to some of their restaurants and all that kind of stuff. But this is very, very well put together. Like the way this was. And I, and Marcus Samuelson is a great host on here too. Like I said, been a fan of him from ye for years from the food network. Uh, shows that I've seen him on. The next one here, these ones here are from um, Diardo, and these ones are, um, one of them is region free, and then um, the first two that I'm going to show, though, are region B locked. This one here is a movie here called Inoperable, which stars Daniel Harris. I like this movie a lot. This is basically Daniel Harris's character wakes up in this uh, insane asylum kind of uh, hospital, and she's kind of like, um, it's like a situation where she keeps living the same thing over and over again. Like she's like trapped in there. She's by herself and weird things start to happen. Then she kind of gets killed, wakes up again. And then she keeps on continuously going on and on. Every time she thinks she's going to leave this place or finally get out, she gets killed. And then she comes across some other characters that's essentially like trying to figure out and outsmart whoever this person is coming after them. I, I really like this. I'm always a fan of Daniel Harris. I thought this was just a great like situation where it's kind of her going through a whole nightmare situation. This one here is called um, Havoc Playing with Dolls. Uh, have, no, Havoc Playing with Death. This is, I think, the third film here in the series. This one is region B locked as well. This is basically about the serial killer that's being watched by this man, like on the cameras. He has like all these cameras watching him down in a cave and like these girls come down there and he kind of kills them and everything. But he ends up like escaping and he's going around killing people out and it's all set out in the snow and everything this director too has a movie coming out that he directed with a guy who looks a lot like charles bronson it was like i really look forward to seeing that one but it's um Essentially, though, this guy going around, it's a really cool killer as well, like the look and everything of the killer, but he's going around killing everyone, and they're all trying to, you know, get away. And the last one here is one that you guys know. This one here is Anna, and this was about this possessed doll film. This one, though, um, is a um, region-free uh, release, so this one is an all-region Blu-ray here. But anyway, though, guys, there's a lot of titles in this one, but thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.